once again, welcome back to the flat. Okay, right, hi everybody. Once again, welcome back to the flat. Absolute fantastic day here, Monday afternoon. Uh, there's a lot of heavy showers focused here in the northeast, thunderstorms, thunder and lightning. So I thought I'd pop up, get a quick vid done. Uh, I might start here and get hopefully finish it tomorrow. But um, plenty to do this week. We've, um, as I say, we've been out busy in the garden in between the showers over the last week, getting it uh, all tidied up, weeded up. And of course, I've been busy inside getting the tomatoes all tied up and whatnot. I have been doing a bit extra sewing over there the last few days. Uh, as I'll show you in the bottom polytunnel, I showed some, um, I showed some, uh, some peas in the, um, try and find out the pocket. Some peas down in the bottom tunnel, and uh, they're romping away, flying away. And of course, they're the uh, the large pea alderman. Um, I saw them about there, uh, about six weeks ago, and already they've passed the tomatoes and they're up the top of the canes. Um, entwined around the tomatoes so they're, they're giving a bit of strength to the tomato plants. I'm, having to, I'm not having to tie up as much as what I normally do. But uh, what I like to do is I like to do the sweet corn when I do the three sisters challenge. Um, and that's sowing your sweet corn. But you've got to get your timing right. Um, so your sweet corn, I'll get it a nice size, decent size, before I put the peas in. Or another way of doing it is to uh, sow your peas individually in trays and modules. And then transplant them out into your modules alongside your... Yes, sweet pea, uh, alongside yeah, yes, sweet corn, sorry. And of course, what that does, it gives a bit of extra support to the sweet corn on your cane. And uh, also, what we like to do is to sow a butternut squash. And I'll show you these, I think it was last video. Uh, they've only been sown a few weeks, but uh, they've romped away in the, in the warm weather, and they're just a the perfect size. And what we've got a dozen of these, and what we'll do, we'll right along the row of the, um, the peppers and the sweet corn. We'll plant these so what these will do they'll cover the whole bottom of the floor and give you a weed free uh, keep it nice and cool and to stop a lot of the weeds growing through and of course you'll get a, a button that squash off them and that's the that's the, uh, the idea of the three sisters uh yes we corn for support for your peas and of course the peas will feed the soil with the nitrogen that it gives off and it's going to feed your sweet corn and then of course the peppers are going to um, benefit from a nice cool flooring nice system it's going to hold the water keep the weeds down and uh, that's the idea so what we'll do we'll um we'll get them sown later on we'll sow the um what i'm going to sow alongside the sweet corn this year is a is a pea hunter or grew a couple of years ago and i got a fantastic crop from them but i'll show you the um what the uh aldermen are like they're massive they grow really tall six foot but you get some nice uh, you get some nice seeds nice um nice pods from them uh, the outdoor tomatoes in there, I sowed some aldermen around them, um, so I'm hoping to get a, a late crop from them, but we'll, uh, we'll show you them later. Just want to pop in here, and if you remember um, in the last video, we started sowing more brassicas. Well, there's, there's a purple sprout and broccoli through already, oh, oh, just over a week. No heating, it's just nice and cool in here, just net over the top, that's all there is now, and the wind's blowing away freely. Uh, there's some water getting through, that's why I put the, the newspapers on the bottom of the trays. So any rain that's dropping through, it's going into the trays and it's soaking in the newspaper and it's just acting like a sponge. So it's keeping them nice and moist. If you remember, when we sowed the wallflowers, this is only this has only been a week and this is uh, my lady, uh, the, the multicoloured ones. I like to sow the, the, the English ones, the deep red ones, I sowed two or three trays of them. But uh, these, the dwarf ones, they're always uh, they're always a nice um, standby, but there uh, you can see the three rows, the three impressions that were made with the uh, with the bamboo canes, just three impressions. And what this does, once they start growing away, it'll be another few weeks before we start potting these off. But they're so easy to pot out and to prick off, and I do it in little bunches. But we'll do that earlier on, uh, later on when we we'll come to pot them off. What I'll be doing next week. Is to uh, start making a mix up. I made a mix up um, at the weekend, but I've used it 
uh, what I did down home, I took some uh, some nice rose cuttings. One of my roses was uh, all bent over with the wind and I, I cut the flowering heads off, but what I did do, I cut the stems right back uh, halfway and I've, uh, I've managed to take a decent size um, 12 to 14 inch cutting from each rose. I've got about five off each rose plant that I've got and there's still flowering buds on there so it'll, it'll carry on flowering right through the summer, but rather than waste the, waste the stuff that has been blown over, I've cut it down, made a nice sharp sandy compost up and uh, set them away in there, a bit of uh, hormone rooting powder on the bottom and hopefully I've put them in there, a nice deep pot, rose pots, <laughs> so hopefully we'll get a nice rooted um, plant for next year. We'll see, we'll try anyway and we'll, uh, we'll I like to try something different every year. Um, that's there, uh, but all the seeds are in, the, uh, the pansies are through, um, the scorcher, that's the Canadian poppy, <coughs> they're well through. Exactly the same again, three rows. <coughs> Excuse me. So it means when I come to start potting off, I can just get a hold of them, out the rows, and uh, two or three in a pot, and they make a lovely display. There, that's the, um, the red wallflower. That's the one, one English wallflower. Deep scarlet red, absolutely fantastic. There's three trays of them, so I've got plenty of them to go around. They're, they're doing just fine in here. Just ticking over, tickety boo. A few strawberry plants up here. We're gonna, um, I'm gonna start on them soon. Knocking them out of pots, splitting them, divide them, and get a nice healthy plant potted, repotted back up again yeah, for next year. Because some of them have hardly been touched this year. <coughs> We've had a pretty poor crop this year. We've had some, some, some up, but not a, not a great deal. So my plan is to get them all tidied up for next year. Get them empty the pots out and some nice fresh compost. So I'm gonna have to make a really big mix up probably use a mixer again but we'll, what we'll do we'll use a, a 3 to one mix and I'll show you exactly what goes into our mixes. I've got the compost here, good bag of compost, um, multi-purpose. There's been people online um, commenting about the comp some of the compost that they've been using peat free. Um, I've made my own compost for years and years and years now I was really disappointed with the state of some of the composts. Uh, you've got to peer through the nose really to get a really decent one. So the best way forward is to make your own compost and it's quite an easy job to do. Um, I've done it for 20 years now and I've never had any complaints from my compost. I grow everything in it. Apart from when I start my seedlings off, um, even then in the springtime when I'm sowing dahlias, uh, large seeds, sunflowers and stuff like that, I use my 3 to one mix because I know the seeds are so big you cannot um, mistake the, the identity of the plant that's growing through. As I say, I keep saying to people, if you don't know your weeds from your seeds, once you start growing and you know exactly what your flowers look like, it's quite easy just to pick the weeds out. But um, when you're sowing like this, wallflowers, or small stuff like pansies and that, I just use the basic multi-purpose and add, add extra sharp sand, make a really free drain and mix, and it's nice and clean. As you see there in the brassicas, as uh, they're coming through there and there's no weeds whatsoever, nice and clean. But once they are up, we'll get the cups sorted out because <clears throat> I'm going to transfer them into cups this year and then transfer them into the garden and I'm going to try the exactly the same with the onions we have noticed down in the bottom bed where we have onions or some onions that has a little bit of white rot so we're going to have to watch that bed I'm going to clean it this year <clears throat> once our onions come out I'm going to give it a really good soaking of jazz fluid and just leave it leave it lying over the winter don't put anything in it um, I'll maybe get a black sheet polyth black polythene Cover up with manure and then put the put the sheet over the top, a few tears on top and just leave it for the year and next year we can plant some uh, different crop into it and hopefully it might clean it up a bit. But we will keep the onions out of there for a good few years. Uh, and what I'll do next year is just to make sure it hasn't transferred anywhere else, I'll start some of the big onions off in cups and then there was a, a little thing online the other night about um, one of the lads, uh, D John Salisbury, he commented on, on the onions and he had he grew some fantastic ones in two litre pots. But we'll be doing exactly the same next year. But it'll be the large onion, the Kelsey onion, that will be doing that. And we'll, we'll we'll start some off in two litre pots, but we'll also start some off in cups, ready for transplanting in the garden, and hopefully we'll get away around that disease. But that's, that's all for next year. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll show you how we're getting on here. This is, uh, as you know, it's, we're in a 100 foot greenhouse. <coughs> it's down the bottom here. We have, uh, <coughs> we have uh, 
outdoor tomatoes and he's it. There's two rows here of outdoor girl and one row of ales at Craig and they're doing absolutely marvellous. They're romping away. Once again, all, that, all that's on the roof is a bit net. Um, all the polythene's off it now. The sides are still covered, but um, as you can see by the doorway, I'm standing I'm standing up straight and the doorway's over here. We'll get the northerly winds blowing and what's happened, the pit props over the years, they've all rotted and uh, this, the only thing I told them up is the frame I've got inside with the staging tubes and that's the only thing keeping it up. So I'm afraid this year, this will come down. Whether or not we'll build some sort of a frame over it, I have got some spare hoops, so we might put a small hoop tunnel over it, I don't know yet, we'll, uh, we'll see how it'll go. But for the time being, um, outdoor tomatoes in there and they've grown absolutely fantastic. And as I see, all I did last yesterday is I went round them again and put a, a couple, two or three of um, all the mint peas and uh, I'll show you how, uh, how we'll get on with them in a couple of weeks time. For the time being, we'll pop down the bottom there. Uh, we'll pop down the bottom greenhouse and we'll uh, we'll see how we're getting on there, okay? Right, here we are. Lower tunnel. Completely different here. Red hot. Both doors are wide open. Roger comes up first thing in the morning. Uh, as I say, the bottom door is full mesh, so that lets it draft through even through the night. And the top door here gets left open till I close over the of the night time. And it's, uh, it's, it's a thoroughfare, lets it draft right through and keeps it there. Uh, well, keeps it a lot cooler. And what it, uh, what it is, some days you can come in and you kind of breathe in here. It's absolutely red hot. Um, what we'll have to do next year is to sort the nets out again. We have a couple of um, couple of spaces on the bottom free and just have the net on so we're getting some uh, plenty of airflow this year as I say we never had really had much of a chance but um here's the uh, the peas here and these are um alderman pea alderman and of course these were tomatoes but tomatoes are down there yeah. and these are uh, Spanish cherry they're a nice cherry they're nice nice sized ones they're grown way really well they're not doing any harm to the to the, the beans of Peas are grown up there, they reach the top already at six foot. But uh, the tomatoes are doing fine. And of course, once again, the um, the peas are giving off an nitrogen into the soil, so no doubt the tomatoes will be picking up on them and uh, feeding off them. But they're growing really great, there's a full row right down the bottom there. Um, goes right at the bottom. We've taken quite a lot of uh, planting out here, and of course, here we've got a sweet corn, and these are. Perfect, these are just a nice size now for uh, for staking up. We've got our small stakes in them. And what we'll do, we'll put a little tire on here and then I'll go down the row. I'll go down the row and put a, just a couple, just a couple of peas down each side. If I can get them out. A couple of peas just down each, just down each side of the, the sweet corn and uh, they can grow up the sweet corn really easy and once again they'll get to the top here and we'll have a, we'll have a cracking crop of peas, a good crop of sweet corn but also down the bottom as I say in between the peppers here what we tend to do is to put a full row of uh, butternut squash and that'll completely cover all this bed here the staging boards will stop because it means we've got a thoroughfare right through the tomatoes and the sweet corn to get out and do our weeding whatever we need doing but down here, we'll put uh, a full row of butternut squash. I've got 12, 12 plants here to go right down the bottom there. And they'll completely cover all this border here. It's going to keep it nice and cool, stop the weeds from growing. And of course, what it also does, it, uh, it keeps some keeps it, keeps the moisture into the, into the soil. But uh, <coughs> that's what I planned for the next couple of days. It's, I came up at the wrong time. I thought it was going to be a bit cooler when I left home. It was uh, actually cloudy, now the sun's coming out and it's absolutely baking up here now. But it's beautiful, you know, we're just uh, days like this, we can't really work in here, far too hot. So what I like to do, I like to leave the work in here for a cool idea, which I'm, I'm intending on doing the day, I'll get myself way out. I've got a couple of little uh, putting up the do. I've got the um, the perennial plants over there, the stock plants. And what I intend to do this weekend is to start going through them, I've got polyanthus and that there. Um, I've got lobelia, I've got um, all sorts of little bedding plants um, that I've taken cuttings and side shoots and uh, bulbs, div divisions, you name it. They're all sitting over there on the bench and they need some attention. 
So I'm going to go through all them and if I've got to change the compost, change the pots, then I will do. I'll make a really big mix up so I can get all these jobs done at once. I'll get, as I say, I've got the strawberries to do, I've got what, what, what perennial stock plants over there to do, and then I've got to crack on with potting off all the, um, all the spring flowers and of course get started on the um, on the cabbages and the, the broccoli. So there's, there's lots to do, lots to keep me busy over the next few weeks. I've got a big grapevine down there. To, I'll be commenting on that at the end of the year. It's only it's in its second year, that one. And it's a big, yellow, seedless grape. I sent it for that last year. Um, it grew, I was disappointed when it came. It was tiny, little nine centimetre pot, just a little bit of a rod. But I persevered with it, persevered with it last year, and it grew a couple of little side shoots. I just let them go, cut them back this year, and then it's grown to a nice big bush down the bottom there, a nice big vine. So, what I'm going to do this year, I'm going to take all them side shoots off and I'm going to turn them into cuttings in the rod, into new cuttings for next year. So, I'll have about three or four, maybe just half a dozen of them new grape vines, and I'll spread them around the garden because they're seedless. A really large grape, not like me black one. Me black one's just a medium grape, and it's got seeds in. Yeah, but I will persevere with that one down there, and I'll, uh, I'll get a hopefully we'll get some nice grapes of it. Might even um, start a little bit of wine making. Who knows? Uh, we can sharp eat them. We love our uh, we love our fruits. So the peaches and that's all went. Uh, strawberries, there's raspberries on there now on the go. So we we'll love our fruit, but we'll see if we've got plenty of grapes of it next year. Then we'll. We'll have a bash at making a little bit of wine. No doubt, um, Carl Nolan might give us a little bit of an idea of how to make it. He makes his beer down at Silver Gardens Brewery. Um, so I might have a pick his brains about that for next year. But anyway, we're going to get ourselves way down home. It's too hot to do any work in here. All I'm doing is watering down the day. And uh, I'll get down home if this wind drops. And I'll, uh, I'll show you the tomato crop down home because we've been picking for about fortnight now. And that's a tomato at Shirley. Now, uh, Joe McKenzie posted the other night, uh, the other week again about his tomatoes. I think it was tomato Akron. Now, last year I had promised to, to try some, but it was turning poorly. I never got around to it. But this year I've managed to get a pack of seeds. One of the lads from the other side of the garden phoned us last week and says he had managed to get a couple of packets of Akron. So he's given me a packet. So I'm going to try them next year. I, I might try them, half them in the greenhouse in the polytunnel in the cold and I might ha try half at home in the glass greenhouse. Um, as I say, my tomatoes are really early down home. I, I was picking them just the end of June. Uh, but there's no, there's a couple starting to ripen at the top greenhouses, starting to go yellow, orange, but um, mine were about three weeks ahead of them. But we'll try this sack run and see what I like. According to Joe McKenzie, they're a fantastic tomato plant, so we'll try them. But they'll be alongside what, what staple, um, Ailsa Craig, or money maker, Shirley, Gardener's Delight. Never go out with Gardener's Delight. They're at the top end of the glass greenhouses and they're just starting to ripen there now. So I always look forward to getting a few tomatoes. I'll give some one of my neighbour. She had already purchased tomatoes from one of the local supermarkets. She tried that one and she tried mine. Couldn't believe the difference, but there you go. Homegrown tomatoes will win hands down anytime. But there, uh, just a little few tips for the day, that's all. Just let, let you know how I. Oh, we're cracking on up here in the, in the garden. As I say, the greenhouses are chocker. Um, are doing really well. Good row of peppers, good row of sweet corn, fantastic row of tomatoes and beans climbing up all over. But if you want to try, um, if you want to try the three sisters, quite an easy thing to do. It's just getting your timing right, having your plants ready when you need them. And this is perfect. I think what we'll do next week when we start the video off, um, if I get to prepare all this ground ready, get all these tied up, We'll start a new video off in here. Um, hopefully we'll pick a nice cool day. We'll start the video off in here. We're planting the, uh, the butternut squash and I'll just explain to you fully how it's going to work. As well as getting the um, as well as getting these uh, beans in. And of course these are the beans hunter. First class, I grew them a few years ago. Really great. So I'm going to be planting the hunter alongside the, um, alongside the sweet corn. And whatever's left of the peas, I'll probably hide the peas in and all. And we'll have a... Uh, first class crop but uh, for the time being we'll get ourselves way down home if i can finish it this afternoon i will do but the way that the weather's turned it's going to pick up thunderstorms i might leave it till tomorrow but i want to show you tomorrow is um my tomato crop down home 
and I want to start cutting back my aubergines because they're starting to get a really bit too big now. Once you've got your flowers on down below in the set, you've got the fruit that you need, time to clip them back at the top. But we'll do that today and we'll do that down home soon. Okay, see you soon then. Yeah, right, okay, well, we'll get this video finished off. Uh, unfortunately, yesterday we had some really heavy showers up here in the northeast. I got some uh, like this morning, brilliant sunshine, it's absolutely fantastic. The uh, wind's still a little bit cool there, but means I can get a few little jobs done down here before I get back up the plot. And uh, I've got loads of potting off that to do, as I, as I say, in the, the previous uh, video. I've got lots of the uh, perennials not there to repot and uh, <coughs> freshen up the pots ready for a growing season again next year. But I thought I'd spend an hour down here this morning. Tomorrow is absolutely marvellous. This is a, a variety Shirley. I, I grow Shirley quite a few times down here and, and, and I find it's just a nice size. If I can get three trusses on my plant in this greenhouse on the benches, I'm quite chuffed. And looking at them, they've been absolutely marvellous and the taste is fantastic. And of course, as I say, all it takes the pace of is to go through the crops, go through the trusses and take any small ones off, any little immature ones. And you end up with the first class there. You end up with the first class truss. That one at the door there is absolutely marvellous. I just cut them down. I cut the small ones off there before. And there, there's an absolute first class truss on there. Marvellous tomatoes. I love them. But there, uh, the job in hand today is to get these eggplants sorted out. Over there, there's there's my eggplants here. Aubergine. And if you look, I'll try and point them out here. I've got there uh, down here. I've got three lovely pods that's just filling out nicely so that they, to me the um, the flowers have set they will be pollinated as I say I have my doors open all the time let the let the um, the bees and the flies and the hover flies and the, the bugs in but uh, they've been pollinated so what I need to do is just check the bottoms you see any any of the leaves that are starting to yellow I've got holes in check the other side just to make sure there's no white fly bugs on them Keep nice and clean just cut them leaves off and what i've got down the bottom here i've got some more flowers some immature flowers so i want to cut them away i don't want them on there's another flower there and it looks like the pod's been pollinated so it's just starting to swell out and by the way don't try and feel the pod because they've got some really sharp spikes on them and you'll end up pricking your fingers uh, usually just by looking at them you can see them i've got a couple of little immature flowers there that have been bent over there's nothing on them, they haven't been pollinated. So I'll cut them ones away. I'll leave that one for the time being because it looks like it's been pollinated. And then I've got one, two, three there. I've got three big ones there that are that really starting to fill out, so that's lovely. Now what I, what I want to do is go to the top of the plant and just nip out the grown stem because I've got quite enough on there. If I get five, even six fruits per plant, I'm over the moon with that. Right, just turn that around and once again, there's some lovely big flowers in there. I'll leave them for the time being, just to be on the safe side. And I'm just going to nip the tops out. Just as you would your tomatoes. There's another growing system there. As a, looks like it's been pollinated, that one. Sure, but I'm going to cut that off anyway. I'm going to take that out. So that's three main growing tips. That was on that plant taken out. Now that one there is a couple of double flowers in there so I'm going to immature flowers. I'm just going to nip them little buds off and once again there's a little growing tip there. Take that out and once again there take that out. So what I've done I've taken all the flowering tips out and just left. I'll turn that back around because there's some more immature flowers on the bottom here. And I'm going to, I'll leave that big one but I'll take them little side ones off. A little, couple of little side ones here. I've left the big ones, so I've got one, two, three, four, four, five. I've got five big flowers and three that I know have definitely pollinated. So I'm happy with that. I can put that back, and once again, I'll get the next plant. Now, underneath here, oh, just notice that underneath there's a stem there, right in the bottom, grown out with some immature flowers on so you can nip all them away take the bottom leaves off and bottom shoots that's grown away really well 
and there we have it. So we've taken all them immature flowers off, and we've got a we've got a first class plant with some lovely pollinated fruits on here. And I'm over the moon with that. That's one done. I've got four to do. I've got four in here, and I've got about twelve up the allotment. So I'm there. Uh, I'm quite happy with them. I've got them in trays, standing in trays. What I like to do with these. I like to water every night, just keep the, the compost nice and moist, and then feed once a week. Once your fruits have set, start giving them a good potash feed. Just the same as your tomatoes, or I can bring stuff down from the garden, some green juice, water that down and give them a good feed of that. But I'm not going to stop in here too long because it's absolutely baking. Beautiful day up here. I'd say the wind's still a little bit cold, like, but um, no doubt I've got some nice cucumbers still growing in there. Quite happy with that. So I've, I've had a first class crop from down here in the, the small 8x6 greenhouse. Quite happy with it. The tomatoes have been absolutely marvellous. I uh, love the Shirley's. And we've got about five varieties up the garden. The cherry ones have just started to ripen. Uh, the Spanish cherry and the gardeners, they're like, they're just starting to ripen. So by next week, we'll start and pick a few tomatoes from up there. Lovely. Over the moon that. Right, so that's the finish for this week. Uh, next week, we're going to go, go back and we'll have a look at the. Um, We'll have a look at planting out the uh, butternut squash. We'll tie up the sweet corn. We'll plant the butternut squash out along the bottom, keep it nice and cool, nice and moist. We'll get them peas uh, in the uh, the peas hunter. We'll get them planted alongside the sweet corn. As I say, that's just just like the three sisters. If you want to, if you're getting short of space and you want to try a few different crops all in the same bed, that's the way to do it. Nice tall plant. Even the tomato plant, stick a few peas around the base of it. The tomato, the, the peas will just shoot up the tomato. And you'll get a double crop, you'll be picking tomatoes off and peas at the same time. First class, but uh, that's where we like to grow stuff anyway. But uh, for the time being, like I say, if you can't uh, wait for the videos, catch one on my Facebook page. It's uh, Jeff Foreman on the plot. And uh, you can catch his most nights on the computer there. We'll, uh, we'll keep you updated. There's a few lads there posting their pictures. Feel free to do so if, you're, uh, if you've got some nice crops on the grow. Take a few pictures and stick them online. And we'd all like to see them, we'd all like to share. So that's it for the time being until uh, you see until next week. I know it's been a bit heady miss with the videos, but um, it's at the moment the weather's here. It's uh, it's strange. It's a uh, heady missy rain showers, and I don't want to go out and get a, a soaking in that. Um, so as I say, I, I try and bide my time, wait for a nice summer day. Nice sunny day and get myself away up there. I will be up there this afternoon doing a little bit of um, potting off. As I say, the perennials, I'll get them sorted out. The strawberries, I've been cleaning them out, changing the pots, putting some nice fresh compost in. Uh, and what I will be doing in the video, the next video, I've got a mix to make up. So I'll show you how to go on with that. That's me. Um, I've been sorting through the compost bins at the back of the house here. And that's some lovely compost. I've got a bag in the barrel there. I'll be taking that up. And of course, I'll show you how to make a three to one mix. Absolutely fantastic. I've used it for years. Um, compost on the online now, they, some of them are really poor. Um, but if you get a if you get a really good homemade compost to go with it, I know you're going to get seeds, and everybody keeps saying, "Oh, you get loads of seed, weeds and seeds growing in it." You know, that, that's the least of my worries that because I can sit all day long and just pick the weeds out. Not a problem. Um, but make a really good mix up and your plants will love you for it. They benefit much better than just your ordinary um, your ordinary peat free compost. I've tried a couple of them and I'm you know I'm not uh, not impressed with them, but we've got to live with that, as I say, where the way the peat situation is at the moment, that's just one of the things that's we've got to stop using it up and uh, try and preserve some of them peat bogs. But uh, that's another thing, that's another idea. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave you for the time being. You can see it catches up uh, on my Facebook page if you want. So until next week, we'll uh, see you all later. Okay, bye for now.